Hi, in today's video I wanted to focus on something that's probably the most annoying thing in Tonex, which is editing presets in real time. Enjoy. To begin with, in this tutorial I won't be using a Tonex pedal, I won't be using a Tonex one, I will be using only an audio interface, which is probably the best way to go. And you can use any kind of audio interface, it can be a Focusrite, Focusrite Solo, anything but has out pretty much and at least one in. Why am I using an audio interface? Because Tonex doesn't have a live editor. And this is a thing that we need to get straight. You need to think about Tonex as a player for software. Not like your typical Fractal or like uh, Line 6 and that kind of stuff. No, basically this is a software first. You need to use software in order to edit everything and later you have to transfer it to your pedal. Okay, here's an approach number one and this is my way to go. So basically you need to plug your audio interface into your PC and from your outs you need to go to studio monitors, any kind of flat speakers. When we go to the settings you need to set it to Asia probably and your audio interface. In my case my audio interface right now is an Audient Evo 8. So what I'm basically doing I am setting an instrument in as my guitar in basically and monitors I can set it to for example main output 1 and main output 2 and those outs will go to my studio monitors so right now I'll be able to hear it in real time. Another important thing change your buffer size because a lot of people seem to have a problem with latency if your latency is too high just lower it for example to 128 or 64 there will be less latency if you lower the buffer rate, but it will be more CPU in intensive. So if, you, so if you don't have a fast computer, you probably have to go to around 128. I am plugged into my audio interface and I should be able to hear everything in real time on my studio monitors. So right now when I'm playing... And for example, I want to change, I don't know, the reverb to another type, let's say. And once I'm satisfied with a tone, I can basically go here and save it as my own preset. So let's say it's a test preset num one. Okay, uh, I'll add the location, create new folder, test. Okay, and right now this preset, when I go to preset tab and go to test, that preset is saved. Okay, so I can change anything, you know, it will sound terrible probably. And right now when I'm clicking it, sorry, it's back to those settings that I set before, right? And you can do it with any preset, with any of the presets that you bought, any of tone models. If you're interested in editing tone at presets, you can check out my other video probably below here. If you'll be connecting into FRFR, the approach will be pretty much the same, because basically you'll be sending the signal from your audio interface into the input of either a studio monitor here or FRFR. And that's pretty much it. So basically you're editing from your PC via audio interface into the FRFR or flat speakers. Hey, just a quick add. If you'd like to buy any of my profiles, right now I have a flash sale. I extend it for another 24 hours. So if you would like to buy any of my profiles, they're 50% off. Also make sure to subscribe to the channel because 90% of you are not subscribed. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that subscribe button below and on with the video. Another possibility is using a power amp into the speaker cabinet. In that case, this is like a DIY uh, 100 watt uh, stereo uh, D class D amplifier. And what I'm doing, I am basically sending a signal from audio interface into the input of my power amplifier. And from this side, it will go into my speaker cup. Let me show you. Okay, 
So I have everything hooked up right now. And all you have to do, pretty much, is you need to bypass the cabinet. Because, you know, there is a guitar speaker. So it doesn't make any sense to use uh, IRs or cabinets, right? And a lot of people are using something called DI profiles, which is basically a profile of only an amplifier. So let me go to my pack of EVH. Okay, so right now I selected my DI profile of an EVH 5150, and basically this amp profile will go straight into the power amp and later into my guitar cabinet. <laughs> So if I want to change anything, it will be affected in real time on my cabinet. Let's say I want to change a uh, treble. Okay? It is affected in real time. So... Okay, but let's say you don't have my pack of the app profiles, what can you do? Basically, you can go to your stock profiles or to ToneNet. Let's go to Tone Models and you need to select this icon. And right now we are in our, let's say, direct profile mode. Okay, so here is an IK multimedia model. Another one. Way too much low end, and... So, those are all amps. Basically, it's like you're sending an amplifier into your cabinet, right? Of course, you need to tweak it, but this is like the proper approach to do it. Okay, and last but not least, here's my favorite way of using DI profiles, which is basically plugging into the return of your FX loop. And basically what we are doing, we are using an amps power section. So basically the power tubes, that kind of stuff. The whole panel is not working. The only thing that's working is master volume. So basically I can raise the master volume, but nothing more, okay? And basically we are swapping the preamp section with your Tonex. So whether you have a Tonex One or any kind of other like device, you can basically put your amps instead of this one. Okay, let me show you this on my SLO 100 Derek profile. Uh, basically I have my audio interface out hooked into the return of a Marshall, right? And another super important stuff lower your output audio interface to minimum. Uh, if you have a knob, lower your monitor output. If you don't have knob, lower your output in Tonex because it may kill your speakers basically. So lower it to minimum and later raise it, okay? Okay, let me show you this. And that's pretty much it. Those are like three ways of editing presets in real time. 
at least unless they don't have a real-time editor. I'll probably make another video about this, but basically, once you have a tone that you're satisfied with, you have to go to library on top and later send them into the tone X. But basically, if you have a tone that you're liking in the app, you'll have to set a trim here and you're good to go. You don't have to do all the guesswork like, okay, let's tweak this, let's tweak this, let's use this pretty bad interface in here in order to edit tones. So for me, this is like the best approach, at least for now. I hope that you found this video useful. Check out my profiles in a link below and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.